<laughs> I'm working on the new one. Just showed LJ the um the the the, the mock up of the new one because she did the footage, but I'll uh, we're putting sound to it now. And I've got Mick on the job. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Hello. yeah. Bring everyone in. Hi, Facebook and the, yeah. uh, the the waiting world. How are you? And there's us having a private conversation amongst ourselves. <laughs> well, our very nice guest. We have a guest all the way from across the pond, and the stream is absolutely brilliant. And uh, joining us all the way from Connecticut, which we've just been geographically educated, is north <laughs> of New York. <laughs> we well, have yeah. James Hawk who is a well quite has got quite the um quite the list of uh, of credits to his name as in photographer filmmaker uh, author there's so much to say yeah so much to say yeah. as we were saying everything behind the camera james yeah. <laughs> yes yes well i'd like to start off by thanking you guys for having me be part of this uh, i really appreciate it no problem. As you as you guys already know, uh, filmmaking and author and, and all that sort of stuff has so much to do with promotion, getting your name out there. Yeah. So I really appreciate this. Well, you're very welcome. Hey, no worries. No, worries. that's what that's <laughs> what the festival is all about. Our festival was put together to help filmmakers basically air their work and stuff and to get advice and help each other so that's kind of what we're all about really yeah and the whole point of this uh this channel really is to uh to to help you uh, network self-promote you know uh, there's the, just pe just also give advice to people you've obviously been in the game a lot longer than some of our um <laughs> filmmakers that uh, they watch and uh you know, one of our big questions that we will be asking you is about, you know, advice to yourself and what you would give yeah. advice to your 18 year old self. And I think this is where um, there's a there's a big gap in the market as far as uh, as far as film is concerned. They seem to be very hermit like, don't you think? Are you hermit like? Yeah, <laughs> it's, actually, it's so funny that you say that, Marcus. I was going to save this to like the very end, my pitch of what I need to move forward. Mm -hmm. But I tell people that there's like, a, it's like a split personality. There's the creative type and there's the business type. And the creative type is the director, the writer, and they sit in their closet and they do their work and they go to the set and they do their work, but they're in this real small environment. The other one is the business type. That's the guy or the girl who gets on the phone and pitches the director, pitches the projects. And so here I am, I'm the director and I can do this. I can do this without flawlessly. <laughs> yeah. I need to find the other half of my personality. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. producer. Yeah. <laughs> Either that would become schizophrenic. That's it. That's <laughs> it, isn't it? It's that, uh, that, that is, it's, it's a, it is a, a sort of a dual personality that you have to have because I think the business side and the creative side uh, are a bit contradictory, aren't they, when yeah. it comes to uh, they are. Uh, you're, you're the business. Um, the two worlds, two different worlds, really. It's why agents well, exist, I guess. <laughs> it's why well, producers exist. I'm sure you guys know this already, but Stanley Kubrick was rolling along making film one, film two, and I think maybe even film three. He didn't get off the ground until he met Jim. I can't remember Jim's last name, but Jim was the producer guy. So Stanley was the creative guy. Jim was the producer guy. And, you know, the rest is history. I mean, Stanley went to the high elevation after that. Yeah. He also didn't like traveling. No, he didn't. And that's why um, it's quite funny because Full Metal Jacket. Was which filmed took, in London. Yeah. It was filmed in the UK. Yeah, right. And when they're doing the running along the road, singing the songs, if you look at the road, uh, markings. It's actually left-hand drive British road markings. Oh, I didn't notice <laughs> that's, that. one, that's one of the things. But it's because he didn't like to travel. Right. So they built the set in the UK in an army barracks, you know, disused army barracks. And uh, yeah, amazing. But so the Vietnam drive on the wrong side of the road as well. No. Well, he he imported the all the barracks. Sorry. He imported all those trees. He did, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, apparently, it took seven years to make. And oh. Matthew Muldeen, the, 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 the lead joker, um, apparently, in, in the space of the filming of that of that film, he had two, his, him and his wife, they have two kids between them. Oh, my. <laughs> it, it, I didn't know that. Yeah, apparently, it took, it took 
absolutely ages. I will confirm how long it took. While we so talked. there was a lot, a lot of hanging around on set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wish, I wish I had that opportunity. Yeah. Being, a, being an independent short filmmaker, and I want to do a feature film, but not so far. Um, it, everything is rush, 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 rush. And then I, I read stories about Kubrick and I read, watch his movies and I go, I wish I could do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it must be a joy for the editors. when They've got, they've got no, all the time in the world to stick things together, haven't they? Whereas uh, you rush them, rush them through these days in, what, in three months you make a film? And uh, the next sort of three months is spent sort of hurriedly putting it together. But right. uh, if you're doing it over seven years, you might get the first, get the first can done before the uh, the second can's even filmed. But yeah. well, Eyes Wide Shut shot for over a year. Wow! Wow! Uh, what's her name? And um, oh, I can't remember. Ah. Can't remember I, the actress Kim, in the Kim act. Bassinger was it? No, 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 no. no it was no. the Australian lass. Yeah, yeah. Aus- um, yeah. <laughs> oh dear, weird crush too. I'm on. Um, <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. Nicole Kidman. Na- name escapes. Nicole me. Kidman. Nicole thank you, Kidman. Nicole. Nicole Kidman. Yeah. And whose husband was who? Uh, Tom Cruise was. Tom, Tom Cruise. Yeah, was... He was the lead man. I knew that one. They said they could not believe it. They they one shot. It was when they were in the pool room. That one shot took a week. Good. Stanley Good. kept saying, "Let's try it again." Huh. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. <laughs> Apparently, he was a swine for that. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. It took, it, it took 13 months, sorry, to film Full Metal Jacket. 13, 13 months. Still, yeah. still a long time. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, we, we, do, uh, we, we, we do sort of forget that the, uh, the creative types, like, like Stanley Kubrick, for example, I mean, the, he, he's got that vision and he's got that perfectionist streak in him which i think is you have to be very stubborn when it comes to i mean your job when it comes if you're making your own stuff you've got that vision from the beginning haven't you and you know what you want it to look like at the end there must be a heck of a lot of can we just do that again that wasn't quite what i was envisaging do you do you find you're a bit of a perfectionist that way oh absolutely marcus you know and and that's a piece of advice that i give the young filmmakers that i talk to you know you can rush a film to get it done. Nobody's going to remember that, that you got that film out on time or early or in a short. Nobody's going to remember that. Or you can take your time and you can do make that film right. Now, yeah. if you don't get that film right, they're going to remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. and you're, you were talking earlier about the conflict between the business guy and the creative guy. The creative guy has got to say, hey, wait a minute. If this thing goes down in smoke, that's my name going yeah. down in smoke. Mm-hmm. So we, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, it's funny. So, so as as a director, then James, um, you know, when 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 you're, because you, you have different types of directors. You have those who go, no, I want it line perfect by the script, yeah. No, no, no. And then they, they, you have those who say, well, you play with it a bit. What kind of director are you? What what do you prefer to do? Gareth, that's a good point. Um, you literally won't even know that I'm on the set, literally. And, and here's my, my basic mode of operation. I don't want to be, and I'm not, I don't want to be the director that says, I want you to do this and I want you to do it like this and I want this and that, because what you end up with is a movie of clones of the director. Yeah. Yeah. I want the characters to have personality, their own traits. I want them to do their own thing. Yeah. So what I do literally is I'll call action and I'll see what, what they come up with. More often than not, they exceed my, my expectations. Now, sometimes they're going this direction and I want to go this direction. So th- <laughs> that's when I say, well, time out. Uh, yeah. I was thinking more something like this. Mm. And, and the other thing is uh, these dictatorial directors tend to get their actors and the crew out of sorts. Yeah. And the last thing in the world you want yeah. is 30, 40, 50 people that are really ticked off at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Baying yeah. for your blood. You've got, to, you've got to keep the dressing room, haven't you? That's the thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. I was watching a, 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 um, a short 
watched a making of documentary yesterday for the film The Gentleman by Guy Ritchie. And the actors were saying it was my, um, <clears throat> who was it? Uh, the, the actors in it, God, I, I'll find out later. But um, Colin Farrell uh, is one of them. But anyway, they were all saying that they'd come into work one day. And apparently Guy Ritchie's when he went to one of these, he would rewrite the script as they were filming. <laughs> and he would rewrite it because he'd have an idea and stuff. Uh, and, and basically they'd come in and he'd, and he'd go, right, we're not playing with the script today. This is what I want to do. So you don't go out and go off and work it out and then we'll do it. And they're all like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, yeah, there's, there's, I think there's freedom and then there's maybe a little bit too much freedom. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. you've got to have a direction, haven't you? I think well, no, you, you, go yeah, on. no, absolutely. People have to understand that. And I've had this problem. <laughs> Where I've actually had to say, say to people, you do understand there is only one director on this movie, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah Gareth, you, you, you have to have control. Yes, yeah. It's, or you end up with a ship without a rudder. Where does a ship without a rudder go? Well, it bobs around and goes nowhere. <laughs> it goes nowhere. <laughs> well, where said, the wind takes it, really? I kind of see the director's job more of as a conductor in that case, where you're, mm -hmm. you have a, uh, a set of musicians who are good at what they're doing, and you're just sort of keeping them in rhythm, as it were, keeping so they're doing, pro producing a, a, a work of art. Because I suppose that way they're allowed to be uh, uh, creative within their own sort of exactly, uh, yeah. template, if you like, yeah. which is, I think it produces much of the best sort of stuff. A lot of the best lines in all films are improvised, aren't they? They're, you know, he's... <laughs> You, you keep that sort of in, your, in the back of your mind that actually someone might have something, they might, they, this might speak to them in a different way that hadn't occurred to me before, just yeah. go with it. Well, Marcus, the other thing too is um, I've written everything except one of my projects. Okay. Written, every single one of them. And I tell the actors, I said, now, you know, I understand that I write things out of my head and you might not say it the same way that I would say. It. So say it like you want to say it as long as the message is the same. Yeah. And, and, and it, it comes across more natural there because they're not having to think that they're just conducting a thought. They're not, they don't have yeah. to, they're not thinking about what the words are. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So how many films have you made then, James? What's, what's, what, what, what's your, uh, what's your director directorial debut up to at the moment? Uh, I don't know the answer. Probably 20 shorts, give or take. Um, but a whole bunch of other projects that are yeah. never been shown to the public or n never completed. I have 145 credits on IMDb. Wow. Yeah, but I don't have 145 projects. I mean, when you're an independent filmmaker, you're the writer, you're the producer, you're the yeah, director, you're, yeah, you're yeah. you know, you're, but 145 credits. Yeah, you, you, and, everything, 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 including the T-boy. Exactly. And, 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 and do you film all your films in and around Connecticut, around your, 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 your where, where you live, or do you travel much at all for those films? And no, every, no, no, every one of them was done in Connecticut. All of them are done there. That's yeah. great. And, and do you have a particular favorite? Because I've done a bit of acting on stage and stuff, and I have a, I have a favorite play that I did, um, for its own reasons, like it went wrong slightly and stuff like that, and, and I do like the pressure. But do you have a particular favorite that you would say, "Yep, that's that's my number one"? Well, I hate to say, <laughs> I hate to say this because it's not my best film, <laughs> but. but my, my favorite one is the Saturn mission. Okay. And it was my first green screen project and it's science fiction, which I like. And when I, well, I, I need to roll this back a bit. Um, my big thing right now is uh, a series called uh, the Epic and Essential Alf Tata Chronicles. And it, it's got right now it has the potential for a lot of pieces, but right now it has like 11 or 12 pieces, animation films, short films, feature films. And the story covers the time span from before the big bang mm. to the end of mankind. 
And I'm working right now, I'm working on uh, one called uh, The Eye of Pettus Enigma. Uh, and it's a book. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. But um, I'm probably going to be able to print that within the next month or so. Okay. And the book thing, um, making movies is expensive. Like I said, I've never made a feature film because I don't have that kind of money. Uh, no. You know, a low budget feature film is over $5 million. Where am I going to get that? Uh, so what I've decided to do is I'm going to uh, do the, everything that I do now is going to be a book. And hopefully there'll be a producer out there that, that sees something and goes, wow, holy smokes, look at that. Yeah. And, and get some traction that way. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good idea. So what does bring the coffers in then on the, is it writing? Is it writing your books or is there, do you do something else in your day as your day job? You. <laughs> My day job is to play. To play. play. That's, that's, <laughs> that's are the you, ideal are situation. <laughs> are you retired, James? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you do out of curiosity, if, if you're willing to say? Before I re- before retired, Before you retired, yeah. I was in sales and marketing. All right, cool. Cool. So, so you, you do have that business element to you then. You're, yeah, <laughs> you're, you, yeah, you must have that. Yeah, but I'm, nonetheless... My thing now is the creative side. I don't want to do yeah. that other side. Is this the side that you didn't really let out until so 17 years you've been making films, you said, isn't it? 17. 17 years. Wowzers. 2005. Should we play one of your trailers? Absolutely. Uh, for one of your movies. Now, if people are interested, the uh, James has got his stuff on uh, Vimeo. Um, and it's the channel is called James W. Hawk Filmmaker. Um, I have put the links into the description for this feed. So what I'll do now is, if everybody turns off their cameras, yeah, what we'll do is I will share my screen. If you turn off your camera, then it'll go off the feed, uh, James. I don't know how to do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, in that case, you and I will, you and I will stay on because it'll show me rather than yourself. Um, and I will share now. But I, I, do you know how to mute yourself? Uh, no, but I'll be quiet. Okay, you just have to be, <laughs> you just have to be quiet. Yeah. He's good at that. 17 years on set, you know, I'll be quiet. That's <laughs> very true, yes. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll have a watch of this. And uh, this is the trailer for the film is Verdict. Okay, so as you can see, James Hawk, filmmaker there. So, Verdict, this is a trailer for. What are attorneys supposed to do when they know their client is guilty? We, the jury, in the case of Patrick Calvin versus the state of Connecticut, find the defendant not guilty. What's wrong with you? Why are you doing this? Why am I doing this? I'm helping these people. We, the jury, in the case of Michael McInnes versus the state of Connecticut, find the defendant not guilty. I love the legal system. I love it. Good, uh, Good stuff. Really that, that actually has intrigued me now because that looks like a little bit of uh, corrupt legality stuff going on there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Uh, I have, I, I, uh, I started watching this last night um, and uh, the, the one thing that came out of it was how little I understand of the American legal system. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I but it, uh, yeah, even though I do watch a lot of uh, a lot of um, sort of crime dramas and that sort of thing, but uh, I, uh, I I I know it's uh, it, it's um, 
we only see over here, we only see the big cases. And it always seems to me that there's like 15 lawyers or whatever <laughs> on each side sort of uh, passing bits of paper to each other. And uh, is, it, is it one of those courtroom dramas or is this a drama that takes place sort of uh, in and around the characters? Uh, in and around the characters. It, it, the courtroom plays into it because he's a lawyer but only to show uh, some of his characteristics. But the, the story is not a, a, a courtroom story. Good. <laughs> that's all I'm saying to that. Good. I, I must admit, that's, uh, it, it, when I started watching it, I was thinking, you know, it was, it was very late last night when I got the link, and uh, um, it does look intriguing. And I know the sort I, I can sort of get a feel for the characters. But um, yeah, it's, it, it, so when this is 2019, is that finished all, that's all uh, going out to film festivals now, is it? Uh, not so much anymore. Um, that project is like two or three years old now. Mm -hmm. And then COVID. <laughs> came. Uh, well, this is why I ask, yeah, is it, is it still out there? Is it something that... Uh, a little bit. Um, yeah. Right now, I'm doing, basically concentrating in two areas, writing books and animation films because mm. i don't want to go on set with a bunch of people i don't want to no. do that <laughs> no 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 so covid I mean, has changed a lot of the way we do things hasn't it yeah so. yeah i mean you you've entered uh, obviously entered the ratma film festival that's how we obviously met um right. that you recently um uh, entered the film festival with your film mother earth from womb to the tomb which is an animation that you've done. Um, we've yet to see it because you haven't sent us the film file yet. But I, I, that's as, soon as, is, as soon as it's done, I'm going to fix that. Yeah, that, that's that's great. That's great. But um, it's so the, funny, Gareth. Um, like I said, that's an animation film that I've done because I can do that here. I don't have to go on set. Yeah. I can do the Photoshop. I can do the Premiere Pro, and so. I wouldn't consider it one of my best projects. Right. And yet it won an award. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm very happy with that. I've, I'm also a little mystified. Okay. Um, it's also shown, been shown at uh, five other film festivals worldwide. And it's promised to show at two more that haven't been announced yet. Right. But uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that. Well, good, good luck with Ratma Film Festival. And that just happens to be another piece of the epic and essential Alf to Talk Chronicles. Yeah, that right. looks quite fascinating. Ah. That's where I'm, I'm I'm focusing all my effort in that area. Very clever. Well, our LJ, who's very quiet, you'll have to excuse her, but uh, she, she's also uh, quite the artist, to be honest with you. She had our logo. Oh, I hate it when it's mirrored. Our logo. Nice done. Nice yeah, done. Yeah, done by LJ. LJ drew our logo. And you can see there we got Flixie as well. At the top here, the taxi. Yeah, right. Yeah, and uh, the rest of it. And uh, that's all LJ's artwork. And uh, basically, yeah, she's quite the artist. And she's going to help me. She's going to help me design Ratma World, which is a virtual reality world where we're going to be able to have uh, networking for filmmakers and people will be able to go in and watch films. Wow. Ah, that's there. It's all coming, I tell you. It's all that sounds happening. ambitious. Oh, I've already built one virtual world, so this is uh, its not going to be too much of a mistake. <laughs> but I need an artist, you see, and this is why I'm roping LJ into it. Yeah. Whether she bloody kicking and screaming by the looks of it, I tell you. <laughs> so yeah, so on on that film, the verdict, um, or verdict, sorry, it's not the verdict, verdict, yeah. Um, it looks like you've got quite a bit of good feedback from it as well. I mean, I, I, I rolled it up to the credits where it says, you know, Jan Harlan uh, said, very good, point well made. So you obviously got this in front of some serious players in the industry. Yeah. How did you get that done? Uh, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Was it bloody-mindedness and persistence? <laughs> I've known Jan for maybe four or five years. Okay. And he's a gentleman. He's he And he's very um, helpful 
to young, not, not that I'm young, uh, upstart filmmakers. Well, you're only I, 17 years old as far as filmmaking is concerned. So that's I'd, true. Yeah. I'd, t- I'd thank, take yourself as a teenager right now. <laughs> thank you, Marcus. I appreciate that. <laughs> So is that it really? I mean, it's the seventeen years making uh, making films. But uh, did you dabble in it before that? Is it something you've always been interested in your life? Or well, uh, the answer to is sort of a qualified yes. Uh, early on, uh, when I was in corporate America, uh, I did a script and a video for energy efficient products. But oh. to further answer your question. Uh, it, it, it was around 2005 when filmmaking became accessible to uh, most people. Yeah. Prior, the, prior to 2005, the budget for the film itself would, would break the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, around 2005, the, the cameras, the software, uh, everything got to the point where you could literally, and I did, you could literally make a movie in your office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why the magic around 2005 is simply the technology came together at that point. I was able to do that. It became very accessible and I think that and affordable. I think that's the the main key for a lot of young filmmakers. Uh, well, a lot of filmmakers sorry, today is that you can do a lot of this on your phone now. The, the, the oh, technology yeah. is there to sort of uh, to do it wherever. And we were talking to another filmmaker um, who has been making films for a long time and has gone back to using Cine 8 uh-huh. and things like that to get that authentic kind of feel to the, yeah. to, to the, to the, uh, the film. And yeah. it was, the, you know, it, it, like you say, you, you, you do that and the budget for the film itself is, is quite prohibitive, isn't it? Because y- you, you've got a limited amount of celluloid. And then right. you, have, you have to say cut and mean it. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even with the new, te- it's a sore spot with me. Mm. I, I'd love to make a feature film, but you can't make, to me, I can't because it would never satisfy my needs. I couldn't make a feature film with a cell phone mm. because it's, it's the end product isn't going to be what I want. Mm. Um, even with all the technology in the right place, you're still talking about, minimum five million dollars yeah and that's that's a lot of money <laughs> yeah you need a few backers for that don't you <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah that that this is a good, it's an interesting point I, I, I do think there is a uh, um there is a, a, a case to be said that because it's accessible now you are getting everybody's ideas on film whether it's good or bad right. and so what gareth and i have a job every year sifting through uh kind of uh, you know okay films pulling out the the things that don't work and trying to find those gems and uh and some years it's easier than others but sometimes you know you think oh does this really is this really something that someone wants to put their name to <laughs> it's a, you know there's there are a lot of things that we just we we do i mean i wouldn't name people but that that would be wrong but we do uh, have a more difficult job some years than others, and uh, to sift through it all. But that's, I think, in the in the old days when it was, um, it was all down to budget. Like you say, you know, you had to have the the money to produce something. You made sure it was, or someone was there to make sure it was worth spending the money on. Whereas now you kind of don't. Well, Marcus, I find to to your point, um, the the film industry is is overrun. With, with directors, filmmakers now, because it's so accessible. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And you, one, of the, one of the things you asked me early on is what advice do you have for filmmakers? And mm. one of the things I tell these young guys is, no, you don't buy a camera. You don't run, run out and ask your friends to be actors and crew and run out and shoot a film. It doesn't work like that. I said, 90 and I said earlier, when I get to the set, you you might not even know I'm there. If everything's going right, what I don't need to be there. Mm-hmm. But what I tell them is 90% of your work is done pre-production. Mm, yeah. You you don't go on the set and wonder what the camera angle is or who's in it or what they're gonna none of that. So 
uh, uh, these young kids, they go out, they grab the camera, they go out and they argue with each other all day. Yeah. I said, well, that's not going to make a good film or, or maybe no film at all. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. I, I see. I've seen it myself. Yeah. Um, and, and <coughs> getting the, um, the free actors in and stuff like that. And then they're late turning up on set or they can't be bothered coming in that day. And, you know, it's not like you're paying them or anything like that. And it happens. And and people will go on to platforms saying, hey, I need free actors and free this and free that. And, and it doesn't work. And as you say, most of the work is done in the planning. And if you Great. know where, where what you want and where you're going, then, you know, it's done, isn't it? We were saying this last week when we were about the actors being yeah. particularly, you don't get your friends to, to stand in front of the camera. You get actors like to stand James in front of the camera. If, it, if, it, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And it's, uh, yeah, little things like that. Well, I work, I get criticized for this and, and, and I don't care. It doesn't bother me, but I use the same actors over and over and over again. And people okay. go, well, you know, if you're a good director, you have to show that you can work with a wider. And I go, you know what? <laughs> The actors that I have are good, they're reliable, and they know what they're doing. Yeah. Why in the world would I uh, go out and get somebody who I don't know and don't know what I'm going to get and don't know what to expect? Why would I do that? Just just tell them, the Royal Shakespeare Company, and walk away. <laughs> 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 yeah. And when it, you, go, you go and watch the Royal Shakespeare Company, it doesn't matter what play, it's always going to be the same players because they're part, part of the Royal Shakespeare Company. Exactly. And, just make sure you've got something in your hand so you can just drop it. You know? you, <laughs> <laughs> Mic if, drop and work. <laughs> if it, you do it, it well, why, why change it? I mean, that, that's the job of the actor is to convince you they're different people, not yours. Right. Incidentally, that guy that you saw on the screen there in Verdict, he was in a Steven Spielberg movie. Oh, wow. Well. I know. <laughs> nice going. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely was. I tell you what, on that note, we'll have another one of your trailers, if you don't mind. Um, sure. This one is The Unforgiven. Um, now, you, we're lucky because you sent us the Verdict. Uh, no, Verdict uh, film. Um but which basically we we couldn't play today because it's too long. It was with a ten minute festival and it's a seventeen minute film, so unfortunately we couldn't show that. Um, hence the reason we're showing the trailers. Uh, but this one looks quite intriguing. Where can people find your films? Where can they find to watch them? Yeah, that's a problem. Um, all my films are on Vimeo, password protected. Right. Be, not all film festivals, but a lot of film festivals say if your stuff is on the internet, yeah, don't even send it. We don't want it. Yeah. So, but what I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of opening up a, a YouTube channel, okay, and putting the older stuff on there. And I just haven't found the time to do it. Okay. It's funny that we 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 as a festival, one of the things, first things we ever said was because we entered into it not knowing how to run a festival or anything. <laughs> um, you know, Marcus rang me because I run a video company, um, <laughs> cor corporate videos, and he said, "I want to put a festival on. What do you think?" And I went, "That's a great idea." <laughs> and off we went. I had um, no clue about film formats for a start. I did <laughs> nothing. It, it, <laughs> every day has been a school day, and still yeah. is. And people go, oh, no, this film, it, you can't show it. You can't make it public. You can't do this. You can't do that. And it's like, because other festivals, and I thought, why are they all so precious? Not not the filmmakers, the, the, fest, the other festivals. Right. We live in this digital world where everybody should be sharing everything, mm. you know? And it's like restricting filmmakers from actually showing their work because they want to hold it back until it's gone through all of the festivals and stuff. And I think it's it's so restrictive to, mm. to the industry. But let's have another one of yours. Starts off a little saucy. <laughs> We're not going to get uh, banned, are we? <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. Starts off a little saucy. So uh, basically, I will meet myself if you two can. Yep, they've done it. And uh, we'll have a little watch of this one. about that right now, honey. 
You need to eat your breakfast or you're gonna miss your bus. Okay. What's it gonna be today? <laughs> Eeny, mm. meeny, miny, mm. mop. Okay. The 17th century Dutch philosopher Baruch de Spinoza made the following observation. No matter how thin you slice it, there will always be two sides. Nowhere is this more evident than in a marriage. Take Mo and Susan Dexter, married for 10 years. Two beautiful children, new cars, a nice home in the suburbs, well-paying jobs, and a summer house on the shore. They have it all. But all is not right in the Dexter house. Watch to see how their choices are determining their lives. Yeah, good one. Good one. The reason I asked about where we could see your films is because I wanted to watch that one. <laughs> well, I'll, 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 listen, I'll send you the link and the password. Please do, um, because I would like to watch that one. That one looks very intriguing. Two sides. Well, of I, I think they did. Uh, the actors did an outstanding job. That was my first uh, full cast full crew short film. Really? And they did an, a, a magnificent... But I want to say this in my defense. My films aren't washed out like they're showing on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> something That's in the... Screen you're on. <laughs> something, something in the compression went on here. I didn't... <laughs> I, I think it might have been the connection underneath the Atlantic. Yeah, well, in, I don't know. In, in, my, in my defense, I, I look 20 years younger in real life as well, James. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, he doesn't. No. no, I'd be happy to. I'll send you the link in the past. Oh, I'd be would, happy to have you see that. Yeah, I, because I, 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 will, I was gonna. I haven't, I haven't watched Verdict yet, um, but I was gonna give it a go this weekend um, when I had uh, some time to 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 sit down and catch up with myself. Really. Um, so there's there's quite two two contrasting films there we've seen. Mm -hmm. What um, is your favorite genre to watch? As far as films are concerned, what do you, what do you, what do you, what inspires you when you go and see a film? What do you, what genre is it that you prefer? Uh, I like uh, science fiction a uh, lot, and I don't. I'm beating a, a horse to death here. I like Stanley Kubrick. I mean, I've seen every single one. Of his what, what's not to like? What's not yeah. to like? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't he do a Clockwork Orange? Yeah. Yeah, he did. That was oh, one yeah. of his. That's one of his. Yeah. 2001 a space odyssey i i went to see that with my brother in the uh in the cinemas um back in the uh 70s <laughs> wow a long time ago and uh i actually forgot to go to a, a rock concert for the same day I, I was so excited about going to see the film i forgot i had tickets to a rock concert <laughs> so, and I, I found out when i got to the cinema and i took my wallet out and i thought ah got a tickets in here for us <laughs> i'm supposed to be in hammersmith odeon <laughs> so, so james what's next then more animations or you do you plan to get back to the world of doing dramas and uh, short films i actually have like uh, three or four projects that that are waiting for the pandemic to clear um yeah, actually, I was going to do one right at the beginning, and that got put on hold. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, it won't be long. It'll all blow over soon, I'm sure, and then you'll be able to get back to it. How are I things would, in I Connecticut, would, I, I, then? I would wait for the snow to clear in Connecticut, though, first. <laughs> yeah. Because in your email to me, you said, oh, great, I could come on the show, and then afterwards I could go out and Give shuffle the snow. The snow. <laughs> okay, you obviously get a lot of snow then. Did, did you have it? <laughs> no, actually, we haven't had a lot of snow this year, but it did last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. We had a bit last night, but uh, not, not too much. But, uh, yeah, it's starting to get chilly here in the UK now. 
What, what's it like with the uh, the COVID restrictions now in Connecticut? Is it uh, uh, easing off or are you still quite strict on it? Since my wife and I are older, we still stayed at the house. Right. Um, but I mean, you can, you can, if you, when you're driving around, you can see that the younger people aren't paying that much attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it does seem to be something that affects the older generation, as it were. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things, unlike the Spanish flu, which basically attacked 20 to 30 year olds. Well, yeah. there you go. Well, there mind you, go. mind you that, that's because they were congregating. Can I mention the books that I've written? Yes, please. Can. Of course you can. Please do. <laughs> we were just going to come on to that. Yeah, we were, we, I'm making my way through your list of stuff that you wanted to talk oh, about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure that we didn't get forgotten. Um, right, this is compliments. Yeah, I'm talking about flu. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first book that I did where I turned a script into a book with the hopes of getting right. somebody's attention. Yeah. Um, and what's that one about then? This is, well, it's, this one's kind of, it's not the, absolutely nothing to do with science fiction. This is a, a serial killer meets a woman that is um, a little off. <laughs> and, and if these two ever get together, heaven help us. <laughs> right. And they do get together. It's like, what, what is it? It's the, the, the perfect storm then. Yeah, it really. Adds to personalities and that. This one's a, all my books are available on Amazon. Okay. Um, and I'm working at Confluence has a part two and a part three that I'm working on. Let's see. You've done was it movie poster album? Ah, exactly. Yeah. Is, yeah. Uh, it's it's funny because in hindsight, we're all Albert Einstein. Yeah. Um, but in hindsight, when I was a young man, I used to collect movie posters from the 80s because up when they, back in the day of VHS. Um, so LJ, VHS is a tape that you put into a machine. <laughs> right. And, uh, I was born when they were out before DVD. Yeah, you were, you were crawling when VHS was just just going out <laughs> of the day. <laughs> it's a bit like um, Betamax, but not quite as good. <laughs> yeah. But back, back when uh, I used to, I was friends with the, 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 the local video shop and they used to get, when they'd finish with the posters, they used to give me the posters and, and, and in hindsight if I'd have kept them, I probably would have quite the fortune in posters. Well, Gary, it's funny that you mentioned it. I'm looking at Rocky Balboa, Casino Royale, uh, All Men Must Die, and Da Vinci Code. The old-fashioned big ones. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good good film. Yeah, so you got that one. My autobiography. Um, Windows on the Universe. Nothing to do with Microsoft. No. (laughs) (laughs) Don't say that. I don't want any infringement here. No, no. My my Windows book would be entitled How I'd Like to Beat the Crap Out of a Windows Software Engineer. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so Windows, what's Windows on the Universe about then? That's about me. Oh, right. Okay. My That's why it's called an autobiography. I didn't yeah. catch the autobiography <laughs> bit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, the clue is in the title. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you, Marcus. <laughs> thank you for embarrassing me. So, Walk into that. <laughs> yeah. Who would care about my autobiography? Yeah, who would care about your autobiography? Exactly. Who would care? What, was there an answer to that? Or is your I wife in the market for a book? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, more my kids and grandchildren. Yeah, that's exactly why my dad did it. Yeah, that, that's so a history I, book, isn't it? it basically, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, let's get real. Who who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my wife's really into autobiographies. She loves them. Um, I, I think just actually it's a great thing just to sort of look into somebody else's life and sort of find out what motivates people. I, I really enjoy uh, sort of finding out about people that way because I think an autobiography is, uh, if it's written properly, it's uh, it's it's a warts and all. And I like the sort of, you know, the honesty in those sort of things. But uh, yeah. I could never write an autobiography. I can't remember past last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> 
Because no. it's something to do with hard cider, I think. <laughs> something, to with, something to do with the fact I brew my own alcohol, so yes. Yeah. You, you better start taking notes then. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. The police are doing that. <laughs> the diary. Uh, so what, what book is next then? Because you have got some that you're in the middle of or you are at the process of just starting, haven't you? Uh, the next one I, I mentioned earlier is uh, The Eye of Metis Enigma. Yeah. Right now, it stands at 275 pages, 33,000 words. Wow. And that's well, part of a Chronicles book as well. Part of, yeah. Chronicles, yeah. But, but Gareth, a, a novel is 40,000 words, and I can never seem to get there. Really? <laughs> 40,000 words? 40,000 words, yeah. Jeez. And then I've, I've got on your notes that you did Gene Reiter? Writer. Gene, Gene Reiter. That's uh, the, that'll follow the uh, Iapetus Enigma. Oh, so that's part of the series as well. Exactly. Right. Okay. Is that the is that the final one of the series or no? Has it just got? Is it like a Lee Child kind of Jack Reacher style? It could go forever. Well, the story has a beginning and an end. Yeah. <clears throat> and I don't want to get into this because I, you know, uh, I just don't want to give my thoughts away, but. Um, but getting from the beginning to the end has the potential for a lot of different stories. Mm. I'm, I'm only dealing in the core get from the beginning to the end piece. Yeah. Right. But if somebody, and again, I'm selling, <laughs> selling my, <laughs> I'm selling the series, but if somebody's interested, this has huge potential. Yeah. Yeah. So you told us your, your favorite genre is sci-fi. Yeah. Now, in our questionnaire that we sent out to you, it says favorite. I don't know if you actually got the it's because it's a British time type of thing, but uh, favorite desert island DVD. Yeah, copyright now, pending. Copyright pending. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's a program on the radio over here called Desert Island Disc, which is um, um, where, where they get famous people to, to say about a selection. It's a BBC project. Choose music. That's that's music it's related. Music. We're completely yeah, different. <laughs> so if you were on the Desert Island and you could only take one film with you, what would it be? You're going to think I'm crazy. <laughs> Have you ever seen Have you ever seen Steven Spielberg's Duel? D -E oh yes. Ah, uh, actor. Come on, who's the actor in that? Um, I'll have it for you in a second. It's a brilliant film. I love that film. It's about a truck chasing a chasing a car through uh, through America. It seemed. I, I, I don't know where quite where, but that's a brilliant film. That is. I love the... somebody or another. Uh, yeah, Dennis Hopper, isn't it? That's it. Oh, yeah, well, well, thank I'm you. Sure. Is it Dennis Weaver? Weaver, Weaver. thank you. Dennis Weaver. Uh, yeah, Weaver. Jacqueline yeah. Scott. Marcus. Yeah. I want you to write a. I want you to write me a story. I want you to write me a story about a car and a truck going down the road, <laughs> and I want you to make it interesting. And I want it to be between an hour and a half and two hours long. Well, yeah. you'd say, "Are you nuts? That is, <laughs> that is boring." I'd actually <laughs> say, "I'd actually say, no, nah, Steven Spielberg did it." <laughs> 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 Honestly, that is such a good film. It's one of those films that sort of uh, started me off with Steven Spielberg. It was, was it was one of his first, wasn't it? That's it, it a was. really old film. Yeah, um, but what a great film! Have you seen that one, Gareth? Uh, no, I, I'm just uh, looking at it. I like, now. I like the uh, the the, the the telephone box was my favorite, <laughs> my favorite uh, scene in that. <laughs> well, the thing that intrigues me and, and the reason it would be my island film is how he was able to make that interesting for an hour and a half to two hours. I'm going like, if somebody just told me what this movie was about, it would yeah. probably be the last movie in the world I'd ever want to see. Yeah. And you watch it and you go. Holy cow, how did he do that? You feel as though you were there with him, though, the whole journey. When <laughs> that's yeah. it. He takes you with, it, with him all the whole way, doesn't he? And you feel yeah. the fear. It's such a, such a good film, really well yeah. made. Yeah. And like you say, simple concept, but it's, uh, it's tiring to watch it, isn't it? It's one of those, like, like uh, I watched the film 1917 a few, week, few months ago, and it's uh, a single shot film in the First World War where a guy runs from one side of the trenches to the other to sort of warn his brother. And it's a single shot apart from about two minutes in the middle where he blacks out. 
and I felt I'd been on the run with him. And it reminded wow. me very much of that that film duel where you kind of feel as though you're in that car with him the whole time, don't you? It's, yeah. It, it's tiring. Mm. Yeah, that sounds fascinating. I'll have to yeah. put that on my list of uh, of films to watch. It's more uh, homework Jane, for you, LJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> it, 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 no, Duel. Duel. Steven yeah. Spielberg. <laughs> so, and 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 all the stuff we've talked about. Okay, uh, you know, you've only been doing the filmmaking for seventeen years. So, as Marcus said, you you're seventeen in film years. Um, but so, as a question, what would you? What advice would you give your eighteen year old self? in relation to your career, you were pre-filmmaking, but in real life, your own self, would you have gone into the film industry when you were a young man? Um, or would you have stuck to the path you had? Um, well, I, I wouldn't have done it if I was, uh, if I went back to 18 at that time. Yeah. I mean, because again, getting back to the cost of production and all that, you, yeah. you couldn't do it yourself. Yeah. Would I do it today? Yeah, I probably would. Yeah, and and in, and I have your question here um, in conjunction with that question because I get a lot of young guys and gals asking me about filmmaking and what advice I can give them and that sort of thing, and I tell them at least two things. One is um, if you're not married, don't get married. Yeah, it's a selfish industry, isn't it? Well, it, it, it here's the problem. Um, you're not going to make money as a beginning filmmaker mm. unless you, you're connected. If you're not connected, you're not going to make money in the beginning. Yeah. So you're going to head down this road. You're going to get married. Uh, here comes the mortgage statement. Here comes the grocery yeah. bill. Here, and, and Gareth and Marks, I've seen this. I, I, I've seen guys that, that really, and they did good work. I've seen them. They got married. And the next thing you know, they're not making films anymore nah. because their priorities are different. They have other things to do. So I tell these guys, you know, if you can, the best thing to do is wait until you get your feet on the, the ground before you get married. Otherwise, it, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Get a camper van. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other thing I tell them is you got you got to be patient as hell because uh, unless you're really, really, really lucky, mm -hmm. your first film is not going to be a, a money making success. No. So you're going to have to make a film and make no money, and make a film and make no money, and make a film. Now that that, that sounds kind of uh, bad, but every film you make, the next one's better. Yeah. And better. You might make a step back somewhere, but nonetheless, the trend is they'll get better. So you got to be patient. Don't think you're going to run out there with a camera, make a, an award-winning film, and you're, you're set. Because very, very low probability of that happening. Yeah. Yeah, there is a low pro uh, pop probability. So, yeah, it, it's good advice. I, I, I've seen it myself uh, uh, on the uh, on, on set of other productions, and basically you... you I've seen crew who just want the project to be over so they could go home because they've got a newborn baby. Um, and, and it's like, um, you know, uh, are you going to the end? Are you going to the rap party? No, I'm going home. You know, I don't care. I just want to go home. And it's, it is quite a selfish industry from both an acting point of view. And, you know, you could be three months in, in, in another country doing a production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, where, where you don't get to go home on the weekends and all the rest of it, you know? <clears throat> and, um, right, so <laughs> we always ask our guests these questions. Um, they're our favourites. Because um, I, 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 I'm the type, I, I've walked out of a few films, but <laughs> have you ever <laughs> either, A, fallen asleep in, in front of... Now, this isn't in the living room in your house because we've all done that. But in the cinema, have you ever fallen asleep in, while watching a film or walked out of the theatre? Neither. Neither? Oh. No, but here, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait, go on. Listen, here, I've seen a lot of bad films. A lot. Right. And you want to know something? 
I learn more from bad films than I learn from good films. Yeah, good point. Good point. No, no, seriously. Yeah, so, it is a good point. I mean, so people will say, "Oh, how could you watch that?" I says, "How could you not watch that?" Mm. Yeah, you're you're seeing what not to do. Don't you want to know what not to do? Yeah, that's important. That's yeah. that's that's a good way of looking at it. No, Me, I, I I just fall asleep. <laughs> I've seen a lot of bad films and and. And I try to go, why don't I like this? What's wrong with it? And figure that out so that I don't do that. Yeah. It's interesting because we have the opposite sort of way of watching films because we watch a film and say, why did I like that? Because I tend to go, I, I don't tend to watch a film critically the first time round. I watch a film to see if it grabs me as a viewer. And so we will, we will uh, you know, watch these 300 odd films that we get every year. And my instinct is to like something or not like something. But when I like something, I then look at it again and go, why, why did I like that film? What was it about that film I liked? But you're right. I probably learned a lot surreptitiously by watching bad films and realizing what can go wrong that hasn't gone wrong in, in other films. It's like, you know, if the, if the music is right, you don't notice it, but it adds a lot to the film. If the music is wrong, it detracts from the film. And so you can sort of easily pick up on the wrong music, but it's difficult to pick up on the right music. It's a good way of learning, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Can yeah. I say, make a, can I uh, advertise for a second here? Of course yeah. you can. Yeah, plug away. What are you here for? <laughs> All my music is done by Matt Milne from England. Okay. And Marcus, you're absolutely right. You, you can take a film without music and it goes like, this is kind of flat. Yeah. You put the right music to it. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. And Matt Milne, and I'm passing Matt's name out there because I always said to him, he should be like one of the top uh, composers in the industry. He's so good. Yeah. But it, he hasn't right. found his road yeah neither have i right. well maybe we should get matt onto the onto ratma tv to have oh, a yeah. chat about music scores for films and stuff. i would love maybe, to do that yeah. maybe What's you that? should do an introduction to us I'm, i'll bet he'd love to do that yeah matt you are quite welcome well, um, <laughs> give it send his details to us and we'll be in yeah. touch with him that's so yeah, great idea. If, if right, you thank do, you do an introduction email Mm -hmm. um, I will. I will. Can email both of us, and then basically we can pick it up from there. But you're right. Music scores are, are so important. I mean, and it, it Spiel, Spielberg said that actually the music was the shark. Mm. You know, it, it was not. It wasn't the, it, the whole thing. The whole thing that set the tone of that film was literally, da -da <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. and and it's like Star Wars. Yeah. And, and you look at the way they use music in that. I mean, obviously, it's John Williams and we, we, for both John, of them, yeah. he, he's yeah. just phenomenal. But <laughs> you, you look at you look at the Star Wars theme, for example, when Darth Vader comes in, it's dun, 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 and it's dark, it's deep, yeah. it's moody, it's all that. And and then basically they get in the medals and it's da, 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 da. it's the same music on different keys. Are you, you going to write the music for my next movie? Do I want to? <laughs> you really, there's, there's you really thing, don't. Yeah. There's a, there's a thing here, James, in the UK where they say that Welsh people can sing. Welsh people are natural singers and the rest of it. As a Welshman, I dispel the myth that all Welshmen can <laughs> sing and can carry a tune. Trust me. Okay. So As you almost, thing, you almost just proved that. It was <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I my sister is incredibly musical and her daughter and her son are both really musical. Um, so, yeah, it's I completely lost that <laughs> with that scene. Totally. But, yeah. But thank you. Uh, for no, the, I, for he can that. pick out a bum note, though. That's good. <laughs> I, think, I think Matt, I, I can't speak for Matt, obviously, but I think he'd be more than happy to have a oh, session brilliant. with you guys. Yeah. And, and he he's, well, he's... <laughs> He's done some good projects, which I can't tell you about, but he could. Um, but he's just like me, trying yeah. to find somebody that, that recognizes his ability. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, it'd be good for him to get in touch because of our plans for the networking and stuff that we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, going forward. And talking about um, the show, it's time to wrap up. Mm -hmm. 
So basically, it's been a great hour. Fantastic hour. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Has it been an hour already? Crikey. It, it really <laughs> has, yeah. Um, we have a competition running, James, if you, if you would like to take part as well, uh, on our website, uh, which is ratmafilmfestival.com. Um, we, we've been going now, this is our 10th year, um, and we've, we've never named the rat. So we've got a competition running on the website where you can name the rat. I already gave you the name. Have you done that? Have you entered? Yeah, you've done that. Done that already, yeah. Have you entered yeah. that? Oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> right, good. Well, anybody else out there who's watching, if you would like to enter the competition <laughs> to name the rat, then ju jump on and do so. And we'll be announcing the winner on the awards night on the 8th of October. Um, and we will announce the name of the rat then. And you can you can enter as many times as you like, Jen. Don't limit yourself yeah. to one, Jen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can, right. you can, I, I thought it was a winner, so I didn't think I had to do more than that. <laughs> uh, well, that's the, the, the same for films as well, James. If you wanted to enter more than one film, you're quite welcome to enter more than one film. We do have uh, people who enter multiple films um, every year because um, they're prolific filmmakers throughout the year. And then basically we... Uh, we get all of their films as soon as the festival's over. So, um, yes. So, Haggit, you know I'm talking about you. And, uh, <laughs> no you names, no bad Loads job. of great films. It's like, oh, look at them all coming in. Well, I yeah. want to thank you. I, I want to thank all three of you. I, I really appreciate this opportunity. Um, no worries. I, I just, yeah. It, I just want to say one thing before I go. Go for it. Money producer. That's what I need. That's what I need. <laughs> yeah. I think you made that quite clear all the way through, really. No, I'm just, <laughs> this is the executive summary. <laughs> yeah, the, you, you've subtly hinted towards that, but now we're just saying, look, right, okay, <laughs> read his books. <laughs> well, this is very much what uh, what Ratma World is all about, isn't it? Where you can That's come and be. come and network and uh, and get those producers and those uh, those actors and musicians and whoever you need. So it's good. Well, I'd like you guys to stay in touch with me. It, it, yeah, unrelated. Just just stay in touch. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, we, we're we're going to be putting people onto our newsletter anyway, so um, we're going to be starting up. A bit when of I get lost in America, I'll, uh, I'll 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 ask you for directions. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So when you're lost in the Nevada desert, you can yeah. ask for directions to, to to Colorado. Which direction do I go in? That's all I need. That's all. <laughs> you can ask for directions to Connecticut. Oh yes, it's about three and a half thousand miles that way, sir. Wow, that long. <laughs> I, I, I have a project you can help me with. I'm trying to get a stone from every single state in the United States. All okay. right. So if you go to Nevada, get me a stone. It's got to be one inch, one inch so it fits in the box. I was going to say, you better be more specific. I think there's a lot of stones there, right? One inch, that's fine. Yes. <laughs> one inch. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing you need is a boulder turning up at the door. From you, sound like, <laughs> you sound like a man after my own heart. I've got, <laughs> I, I love stones. I've got whole piles of stones in my garden. I keep digging them up and keeping them. I just can't throw them away. But um, I, 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 when I go to the beach, my wife sunbathes, I stack pebbles. That's what I, 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 I collect pebbles. I collect pebbles. I actually have on my desk here. I will try my try my best to try and show you to see if I can actually show you this. But on my desk, hey, here, hey, I have out. a collection of pebbles and lots of dust, obviously. And so the Millennium yeah. Falcon flying through the asteroid. There field. you go. Yeah. Yeah. There's my that's my asteroid field and my Millennium Falcon. Wow. What are what are the uh, what's the chances of that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the flashing light in the back? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, come on, we need to wrap up. So thank you very much, James, for coming along. It's been absolutely fantastic to have a chat with you and find out all about your films and how uh, you got into it all. And uh, thank you for being a great guest. Great guest. And for tuning in. Good luck with shoveling the snow, <laughs> yeah. um, which I think is next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yes, so what we'll do is we will say thank you very much and love you and leave you. And then we'll speak to you later and look forward to seeing your film when for the festival. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to send you the link or the, the, the Dropbox link. Brilliant. Yeah. So, okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>